Bill Bender 92. That's at Bill Bender 92. Bill, always good to catch up. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. Thank you so much. So we just a second ago kind of laid out what we thought or what, what our top eight would be um, if we were on the committee. So let me put you on the committee. Let's just start there. Uh, top eight for you tonight as we stand right now at this point in the season for the, the college football playoff poll. I would probably – do you want me to go one to eight or eight to one? Uh, you can go one to eight. That's fine. One to eight. All right, well, Georgia, that's easy. Number yep. one, uh, obviously, a uh, definitive statement. Two, three, I would go Ohio State and Michigan. Won't be surprised if it's flipped based on okay. the last two weeks, and it's Michigan, Ohio State. Um, four, going with TCU. They're undefeated. I think they're being somewhat disrespected. Five, Tennessee, six, Oregon. Seven LSU and eight and temptation put USC there, but I might go UCLA. I think they're the slightly better team. So your top eight looks exactly like mine. Hey Dad went a little bit different. He put Michigan two, Ohio State three. He said he just thinks Michigan has looked a little bit better. So I got no argument with that. I got one through seven the same as you, but then I just put a jumble of USC, UCLA, and Ole Miss at number eight. And obviously, if Ole Miss loses to Alabama on Saturday, they fall down a good bit. If they win on Saturday, now they've got the best win among those three teams. Would you have Ole Miss in that 10-11 range still? 9-10-11, yeah. They're, they're in the business. I mean, they still got a lot in front of them. They need some help, obviously. Yeah. If uh, I mean, they're begging for help for, from an Arkansas or a Texas a and I mean, if they beat Alabama and LSU loses, they don't want to They don't want to They're not going to for so. I think they're right in that range, and that's where they'll be um, coming off a of bye week. I don't want to say out of sight, out of mind, but given the craziness that happened last weekend, it was probably good to be off the radar for a week. May, may not have been a bad thing. So we were talking about the, the line on Ole Miss, Alabama earlier today. Alabama's a 12-point favorite. Hey, Dad said that Ole Miss is incredibly disrespected by Las Vegas. So as somebody that lives outside where we live, I really am curious what your perception of this Ole Miss team is. I think they're solid. I think they run the football really well, and I always gravitate towards teams that do that as long. It's, they're kind of, in some ways to me, a little bit like Michigan this year. Their defense gets after it, probably underappreciated. They have a power running game with two running backs that can dominate a game. And, um, you know, the, the quarterback always gets questioned, even though he's had a pretty good season. So, I do think they're a very similar team in that sense and a chance to prove it this weekend. I don't disrespect them. I think they're, uh, they've are they earned that. And if they can get this done against an Alabama team that's just been very undisciplined on the road, I don't want to say miserable because all their games are close, but no. um, just very uncharacteristically undisciplined on the road in every chance they've gotten this year. I think that's a good way to describe it, visiting with Bill Bender from the Sporting News. So you – a second ago, said that you would have Ohio State slightly in front of Michigan. We're obviously going to get to see those two teams on the field against each other in the final week of the regular season. But as we sit here two and a half weeks out from that game, what do you think the differentiating factor is between those two teams that are clearly the class of the Big Ten? Oh, it's going to be awesome. They're, they're, everybody's talking about it now. I mean, one team has a better collection of skill position talent on the perimeter. Ohio State with all those receivers. Marvin Harrison Jr. has been amazing. Uh, Stroud, obviously, still, despite the wind. I, and I've got to tell you guys this: like, understand how bad to understand how bad that wind was in Chicago. You just got to be there sometime. It was awful. Um, so um, I'm not making excuses because you got to play in the weather, but not a great game. But I, and then Michigan just this power running attack. They found their identity. They know who they are. They're not going to apologize for it. Um, this Richard, I think this team's better than what he had last year, and, mm -hmm. and they are equipped to maybe go in there and beat Ohio State. It's going to be a really fun game. So this is the most subjective of questions, but I know you've done it both places. Michigan, Ohio State, better setting when it's in in Ann Arbor or in Columbus. Um, that's such a tough question. But I know I'm going to say Ohio State. Just because 
I was there in 16 when they, that was the game where JT Barrett never was a spot and all that. And it just, you can just feel it from, from the go. Um, you know, I was there last year, obviously too. And it, it's fun. It's fun both ways, but there's just something about Columbus at noon when uh, Michigan comes in there, the stadiums, the, the way the stadium sits, I feel like, and you know, Michigan fans would probably disagree. I just feel like it's louder. It, it gets so loud in there for that game. It's a, a lot of fun to watch and again you know people are already talking about it and we got we still got two other games to play first yeah and i guess that's the only other thing is it just a rowdier environment in columbus than it is in ann arbor because it looks rowdier on television um a little bit i mean it's you know both are great college towns but i mean i don't know last year in michigan it was rowdy more maybe even more so because it had been a minute it'd been 10 years since they won (laughs) the game had been so and I think that's what's amped the stakes up this year. Because if you really think about it, if Michigan wins this year, that means Ryan Day is one and two against Michigan. And they haven't had a coach with a losing record against Michigan in a long time. So uh, there's definitely a lot of play for both. I mean, Jim Harbaugh, and they're rolling. Their only losses in the last two years are kind of a fluky game at Michigan State and a loss to arguably you know the best Georgia team of all time. He's got it rolling. Bill, I think we have conditioned ourselves to not write Nick Saban's obituary, right? I mean, people have tried to do that a couple of times, and he tends to bounce back with a national championship when that happens. But there are people that are looking at this, Uh, even Greg McElroy, who played quarterback for him on his radio show, saying, you know, for the first time, I'm, I'm actually a little worried about where Alabama is headed. Given the fact that they've lost twice this year, and there are two games that they have played that they very easily could have lost that they didn't, being Texas and, and Texas A&M. Do you see any foundational issues at Alabama, or is this a blip? Uh, it's. I, I heard Feinbaum's comments about how it seems like Nick, Nick Saban is disgruntled because it's the, the changes in college football, and I think there might be something to that. I mean, they're always going to have a four-star, five-star roster, a top-shelf roster with all this talent. It's just these penalties are just amazing. I'll say this. I don't know that it's in a steep decline yet, but I, I just felt like the whole night, as long as LSU was going to stay close, they were going to win that football game. And I haven't felt that way about Alabama in a while. You know what I mean? Like, you just assume – They'll put their foot down and win the game. But as that game went on, I just more and more was confident that Jaden Daniels was going to do something to lead LSU to the victory. And I guess I haven't felt that way about them in a while. Bill, probably the last thing, got about a minute and a half left. Uh, You're a smart guy. Help me make sense of the line on this LSU-Arkansas game where LSU is only a three-point favorite. And I ask that with the backdrop of they're playing really well, they're healthy, Jaden Daniels has taken it to another level, Arkansas is not healthy, and they just kicked or you know suspended two more guys on the defensive side. What gives on this? Yeah, those late, late games like that kind of freak me out because it's just when I did our picks this week at Sporting News, it's like, oh, I'm taking LSU. Are you kidding me? And and every time that happens, something happens. So right. uh, I'll use the example of Kansas State, Oklahoma State a few weeks ago. That is, has, is the runaway winner for the most mystifying line of the year, and then Kansas State, uh, you know, forty eight nothing. So, you know, it's one of those that, yeah, I definitely think LSU wins the game, but it's one of those where you, you look at it and you're like, well, somebody knows something, and I, and I hate games like that. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, like, I keep looking at it, it's like, do, does Vegas know that Jaden Daniels is like in a full upper body cast or something and, <laughs> and nobody else knows? I, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. I do know that it was a fun weekend last weekend, and hopefully we've got another great one coming up this weekend. Thanks, Bill. Hey, no problem, guys. Have a good one. Thanks so much for having me on, Richard. I'll talk to you soon.